Numbers 11, beginning at verse number 10. Numbers 11, beginning at verse number 10. Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thine sight, that thou layest the burdens of all this people upon me? Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them that they should have not said unto me, Carry them in thy bosom, as a nursing father beareth the suckling children, child, unto the land which thou swert unto their fathers? Whence should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. Verse 14. I am not able to bear all this people alone because it is too heavy for me. When helping you is hurting me. Thank you, ushers, for standing so dutifully. When helping you is hurting me. We all have been in situations to where we set out to do good, but then it turns out that it comes back on us twice as hard. We all have good intentions when it comes to helping other people. We all have good intentions when trying to do our best to make sure that everybody around us is happy. <laughs> we all do our best when it comes time to take upon ourselves the duties of other people. All right, Today, this morning, this afternoon, I want to encourage my grandparents. And so often that grandparents take on the duty of raising their great-grandchildren. That's right. That's right. Their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. After they have raised their own children. Mm -hmm. If anybody can understand what Moses is going through here this morning, mm -hmm. it should be those grandparents. All right. All right, or those ones who have taken on the responsibility of someone else as if it was their own yeah. responsibility. Yeah. Those are the people who can understand what Moses was dealing with mm -hmm. on this level. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about Moses had done all that he can do. Mm -hmm. Moses had did what God had commanded him to do. Moses had went and got the children of Israel and delivered them from a hard situation and was about to take them into the promised land when he heard all of this complaining and murmuring. Oh, yes. Can I just get off the bar a cigarette there? Right, right, right. That's the way it is with some of us in here today. Yes. You have done all that you can do for people yes. and yet it's still, no matter what you do, no it's not. still not no, enough. Not enough. <laughs> not enough. Teach the day, Pastor. Teach. You give all your money, and it's still not enough. You give all of your love, and it's still not enough. You, 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 you bring them in, and you feed them, and you take care of them, and you put clothes on their back, and yet it's still they got to go complain about something. That's right, Pastor. You teach today. Moses. Did I tell you Moses was in that situation? Did I tell you that Moses, Moses here in this, in this text right here, Moses is saying, Lord, why are you treating me this way? What have 
I done to deserve this? I know somebody out there saying the same thing. What have I done to deserve this? Why are you mad at me? I have done what you wanted me to do. I done played the role of the baker. I done played the role of the chef. I done played the role of the mother. I done... Why are you treating me this way? No matter what I do, they're still not satisfied. Moses is in this situation. You, you see it right there. He said, why are you treating me this way? What did I ever do to you to deserve this? Yes, Moses said, Lord, look. You called me. Mm -hmm. I didn't call myself. Wow. I was living in the comforts of my own zone. Right. Taking care of my own kids. Done raised mine and now you want me to raise somebody else's? Lord Jesus, have mercy. Why are you treating me this way? Do I really deserve this? Well, well, Moses said, did I conceive them? So in other words, Moses said, did I lay down right there, amen. and give birth mm -hmm. to these children? Right. Grandparents, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, talking you, about. you know what I'm talking oh, about. Yeah, right. You can't yeah. enjoy your house because they don't turn it into their house. Thank you, Pastor. Keep going. Oh, yeah. Stay with it. You done work hard all of your life so that you can lay down in comfort. And every time you turn around, somebody is knocking on the door, talking about, I need this. I need that. Baby, what about me? Stay with it today, Pastor. Oh, You're in the right place. Stay with it. I understand. I understand where you're at right now. Moses is in that same situation. Moses is mad at God because God called him. Moses said, look, I had a good job. I had to quit my job because I had to take care of these folk. You called me to this. I didn't call myself. Why are you treating me this way? Why? Do I deserve this? You're sitting there. You're thinking about this. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you why you're thinking. Sometimes God puts you in situations yes. to teach you to learn to depend on him. Oh. All right, Pastor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yep, you deserve it. If you didn't, God wouldn't have put you there. Right. Let, me, let, me, let me see if I can go in reverse here a little bit. If God had to put you there, then who would have been there for him? Right, Pastor. You teach today. The system is full mm -hmm. yeah. of kids that don't nobody else want. Nobody. That's right. Nobody. nobody. These are your children. Yeah. You may not have given birth, but you gave birth to their mother. You gave birth to their father. So they are your children. And if you're anything like me, you don't want to see nobody else, nobody else with taking you. care right. of your children. That's right. I'm sorry. That's just my conviction right now. I, 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 I feel Moses, but Moses also have to understand what God was in this position. These, these, folk, these folk were complaining because of the hard life that they thought they was getting ready to live, not understanding that God had already made a way. I want to let somebody know today that God has already yes. made a way. Made a way. Yeah. Yeah. Way God, has, God has made a way where there was yeah. no way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They say he's a way maker. A way maker. Yeah. They, 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 they tell me that God promised me he'll never leave me nor forsake me. Yeah. But see, Moses didn't have that. That's right. right. See, we got that today. Yeah. We got the promises of God. Oh, yeah. Moses had to do what God told him to do, yeah. not knowing that God was going to be behind him every yeah. step. Yeah. But see... Can I help you out today? Can I share this with you today? And I want to share this with you. Moses was dealing with some ungrateful people. It's in the text. God had delivered them from the hands of Pharaoh through the servant Moses. 
And yet and still they was ungrateful. Right. Why? Because they didn't understand what God was getting ready to do. Yeah. I come to drop this on somebody today. Quit being ungrateful until you understand the plan of God. You never know what God is going to do in your life That's until right. you sit down and just have a little talk yeah. with him. Yeah. Look, look, look at what Moses said. Was I that mother? So why dump the responsibility of these people on me? I feel you, mother. I feel you, mother. Why? Dump the responsibility of somebody else on, on me. me. Mm -hmm. right. huh. Time we got ready to retire. <laughs> 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 the but, 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 but can I help you out? You retired from man's job. Uh, uh, yeah. That's it, but God had another job yeah. for you. Because if you, God, if you say you are serving, you are serving until the day you die. Yeah. No matter what happens in your life, you're always working for God. Always. God, God, working for God has a retirement plan that pays off at the end. Oh, yeah. You don't have to worry about the mailman getting stuck in the snow. You don't have to worry about your routing number getting messed up and wondering where your money is. With God, your money is always on time. That's why they call him an on time God. Look at what Moses says. Moses says, why tell me to carry them around like a nursing mother? Carry them all the way to the land you promised to their ancestors. I hear you, grandmothers. Lord, you Gave them a mother mm -hmm. and a father. Yeah. Why do I have to take on that role? Right. Yeah. I took care of my mother mm -hmm. when she got sick. Mm -hmm. I took care of my father when he got sick. Mm -hmm. I took care of all of my children and raised them, got them through school and some of them through college. And yet it's still. Yet it's still. I got to go backwards and start all over again. Why? Why should I carry them around like a nursing mother? Well, it's one thing I can say about a nursing mother. No matter what time of the day it is, she's always going to take time to feed her children. No matter where she's at, she's always going to make a way to take care of her children. <coughs> Have you ever woke up in the morning and felt like you were still tired? <coughs> Tossed and turned on, night long, wondering why you're waking up tired. <coughs> you don't know why you feel the way you feel. Don't understand why your body going through the changes it's going through. You tell yourself, Lord, I done been a cab driver. I done been a limousine service. I done been a chef. I done been a babysitter. I done been the baker. Whatever was needed of me, I have been. But when is it going to be time? For somebody to yeah. be those things for me. Oh, yes. yes. Say that. <laughs> when is it? When is it? Gonna be time Come on, for somebody to be those things for me. Yes. Well, have you ever thought about what God would say? God said, Didn't I wake you up this morning? Yeah. I was your alarm clock. Yeah. Yeah. You teach God said, now. Didn't I keep your clothes in your right mind? Yeah. I was your psychiatrist. Uh, God said, didn't I give you the activities yeah. of your limbs? Yeah. Yeah. I was your therapist yeah. this morning. Yeah. God said, didn't I take your burdens away from yeah. you? I was your heart surgeon. Hey. You didn't even yeah. know it. When are you going to take time teach to think day about day the day. things that God has done for you? You yeah. take your day, Pastor. Hey. It's so quick we forget yeah. about yes. the things that God has done for us because
because we're overwhelmed by what doing things for do? other folks. Yes. Let me drop this bomb on you. You yes. ain't overwhelmed by doing nothing for nobody because all of your help coming all from the Lord. Lord. Yes. All yes. your help. Yes. Pastor, you teach today. I'm trying to move on. You are right. But I like what Moses said. Moses said, why are they complaining? Yeah. Why are they murmuring? Mm -hmm. Lord, I done done everything that you asked everything. me to do. Yeah. You put me in a situation. Yeah. I didn't complain. I brought them out. I'm taking them where you want me to take them. Yeah. I done fed them. Uh-oh, that's another point. <laughs> Moses said, Lord, Lord, look at what he says right there in the text. Where am I supposed to get meat? Yeah. For all these people who are whining to me, give me, give us meat. We want meat. Moses, can you hear him now? Saying, Lord, they won't even eat the meat you gave them. So what makes you think they're going to eat the meat I got to give them? You gave them meat from heaven and they turned it away. They said, one enough. What am I supposed to do? I can only give them what you give me. Well, I come to tell you, sometimes we have to go above and beyond the call of duty. I know as a grandparent, I know you're going to make them grandkids eat what you cook. If you don't eat what, what I cook, you don't get nothing to eat. But eventually you bag up from that. Because then God bring those things back to your remembrance. Remember when you was coming up. Did you go to bed hungry? I fed you when you was hungry, didn't I? God said, look, didn't I provide for you when you needed somebody to provide for you? Didn't I give to you when you needed somebody to give to you? Didn't I nurture you when you needed somebody to nurture you? When are you going to realize what I have done for you? I'm expecting you to do for other folks. Look at, look, look, look at what Moses said. Moses responded to God. The way many of us do in times of trial. He essentially said, God, here I am serving you. Why did you bring this upon me? It's easy to say to God, do not bring this upon Moses, a carnal and ungrateful people did. Yes. Yet, though God did not directly afflict Moses with this, he ultimately allowed. allowed. Did you hear that? He allowed it. God allowed this for the same reason God allowed any affliction in our lives. Yes, sir. Moses. Moses. Thought God was picking on him. Yeah. But can I let you know this today? I'd rather be picked out and picked on by God uh -huh. than to be picked out and picked on by the devil. That's All right, Pastor. Right, All right. Because when the devil picked on you, He'll cause you to lose your mind. Oh, yes, will. When the devil pick on you, he'll cause you to cuss God. All right. When the devil pick on you, he'll cause you to leave your family. He'll cause you to slam the door on your mother and your father when the devil picks on you. Oh, yeah, when the devil picks on you. Yes, sir. Okay, I seem like I'm talking to myself. You're all right. Stay there, Pastor. But look at him. Look at what he says. If you treat me like this, Please kill me. It was to the point to where Moses wanted to die because of the way he felt God was treating him. How many of y'all felt that way at times? No, just be honest with yourself. You're so overwhelmed, you're so overburdened to where you just don't know which way to turn. You don't know if you're going or coming. You lay down at night, you can't sleep. You lay down in the day, you can't sleep. No matter what you go through in your life, there is still something always nagging at you every minute, every second, every hour of the day. No matter how God to bring you through, something's still going to be nagging at you. So sometimes you tell yourself, just kill me right now. I shouldn't have to go through this. Lord, I done worked hard for you. I done gave you everything I have to give. Why are you putting me through this? Don't act like you. Don't never say those things. Because I know some of you are sitting here right now. 
asking, Lord, why did they take my taxes when I had planned that money out for something else? I know y'all don't want to hear that. But I'm going to get ready to leave you alone. You're all right, Pastor. You teach the day. Look at verse 14. Moses come to his senses. Just like a lot of us need to do every day. Moses come to his senses. Moses says, I'm not able to bear all this. All these people alone. Now Moses has a correct understanding though not a correct attitude yet. He cannot bear all these people alone. God will do it in him and through him. Mm -hmm. I come to tell somebody today, when you get to that point in your life, you're showing God your transparency. Yeah. You're telling God, Lord, don't give up on me. Mm -hmm. That's right. You come to the point in your life to where nothing is going right, Kids driving you crazy, grandkids driving you crazy. You got a pink slip from your job. The doctor that gave you bad news. I know it. You're probably saying, preacher, somebody needs to give me a drink right now. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I know you, 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 you're sitting there talking about, I just need to get a hit of bumpy face right now. Bring me some Jack Daniels right now to calm my nerves. I need to hit him a joint right now. I don't care what the preacher's talking about. I'm going through hell, and I need help. You teach the faith, Pastor. Stay with it. I know. You're tired. Yeah. Everybody knocking at your door. You're tired. Yeah. You can't get no rest yeah. because you're worried about other folk, how they treated you. I know you're tired. You want to give up on life. I know you're tired. You're ready to throw in the towel. You're tired. You're ready to close your door. Let your blinds down. Hide your car in the garage. Lord, I know here you got cattle on a thousand hills. And I'm trying my best to keep my bills paid. And yet and still, you want me to give up my life to help somebody else with their life. Well, I come to tell you today that helping somebody else may hurt you sometimes. But if you just keep on helping. I was always taught that working for the Lord We'll pay off. We'll pay off. After a while. After a while. You have to understand, Moses didn't have what we got today. Moses didn't have God's holy word. Moses didn't have God's promises. Moses didn't have God's promise of, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Moses didn't have God's promise when he said, I'll be a bridge over Trouble water. In Moses' eyesight, his water was always troubled. His water was always disturbed. Moses didn't know if he was going or coming. Here Moses going up on the mountaintop, trying to get a word from the Lord. And when he come back, he's getting hit, bombarded with everybody complaining about what they don't have. Well, I come to tell somebody today, Quit looking at what you don't have and look at what you do have. You do have a house to stay in. Moses didn't have that. You do have a car to drive. Moses didn't have that. You do have a job that paid your bills. Moses didn't have that. You do have a good health plan. Moses didn't have that. You do have food in your refrigerator. Moses didn't have that. Only thing Moses had was a God to glorify and a God to satisfy. I come to tell somebody today, 
quit looking at the big picture and look at the picture that God has placed right in front of you. Quit talking about what the Joneses have and what you don't have when you don't understand what the Joneses had to go through to get what they got. Look at Moses. Moses was studying, saying, Lord, why are these people complaining to me when they should be complaining to you? You took me from a lifestyle to where I was raising my kids to take care of all of these other folk. I don't know why you're doing this to me, why you're treating me this way. But can I stop to tell somebody today, it ain't what God is doing to you, it's what you is doing to yourself. Because if you submit to God's will and do it God's way, God will bless you beyond measure. I tell you, serving the Lord has paid off if you just keep working for him. He'll keep working for you. If you build for him, he'll build for you. If you talk with him, he'll talk with you. If you work for him, he'll work for you. If you walk with him, he'll walk with you. I tell you, quit looking at this thing through the wrong eyes and look at it through your spiritual eyes. If God can't count on you, then who can he count on? I tell you today, thank God for me reading about Moses because it has made me appreciate the things in my life. How God is working on me. How God is elevating me. How God is showing me favor. I tell you, thank God for the favor of the Lord. Thank God for being a company keeper. Thank God for being a way maker. Thank God for being a rose of Sharon. Thank God for being my battle axe. Thank God for being the blessed one. Thank God for being the creator. Thank God for being my deliverer. He picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. I don't know about you, but look how you're looking at me. Preacher, I'm going through hell. And you up there talking about what I should be doing. Baby, have you ever thought about the reason you're going through hell? Is because you're looking at hell when hell should be looking at you because if you got your hand in the master's hand you won't you just be doing like David yay though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil that's why David didn't feel no evil because he knew that if he just kept walking, one day his situation would change. And I come to tell somebody today, if you keep on walking, one day your situation will change. You can't stop and look back where you come from. You got to keep looking and keep your eyes pressed on the mark of the prize of the high calling which is in Jack Christ Jesus I tell you if it had not been for the Lord on my side I'd have gave up a long time ago but I'm reminded of what he told me he said this life is not yours to give up on how can you give up on something that you didn't give to yourself? I thank God that this life belongs to Him. I thank God that I got a God. I can call my Father. When my Father wasn't there, He was always there for me. 
when my friends uh, turned their back on me. He picked me up uh, and he carried me uh, till I got able uh, to walk on my own. Uh, thank God, 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 uh, thank God uh, that he carried me. Uh, thank God, uh, thank God uh, for Jesus Christ. Uh, over 2,000 years ago, he gave his life so that I may have, have eternal life. Thank God for Jesus Christ who hung, bled, and died. Thank God for Jesus Christ who rose one Sunday morning with all power in his hands. For saving me, thank God for carrying me. Thank God I got a testimony, and my testimony is Have you tried my Jesus? He's alright. Have you tried my Jesus? He's alright. If you haven't tried my Jesus, you better try. They tell me he was in a brown man's tomb, but early. Sunday morning, he got up with all power, all power, all power, all power, all power in his hands, power to heal the sick, power to deliver the drug addict, power in his hands, he got power, wonder working power, even power, my God, my God, my God, my God. My God, my God, my God, oh, oh my God, thank God, for oh, my God, I don't know about you, but thank God that he introduced himself to me over 25 years ago, I was sitting at home in an old chair, a dark cloud came over my house, this is my testimony, it was over nobody's house, but my house, I looked out the window, it was sun shining everywhere, but my house, I'm like, what is going on here? I told the Lord, I lift my hands, I said, Lord, I'm tired of living the way I'm living, because death was over my house, I had to break the curse, and once I broke the curse, the Holy Spirit, Fill me up, the Holy Spirit got in me, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit got a hold of me. One Friday night, on a Sunday morning, I woke up, I went to church with God on my mind. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for rescuing me. He picked me up out of the watering clay. I don't know about you, but my God, my God is a mighty, 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 mighty good God. He be alright. He be alright. If he's made a way, say yeah. If he's delivered you, say yeah. If he's provided for you. Say yeah. If he's holding you, say yeah. 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 And you said, 
to God. Take me back. Take me back to a place where I Take me back. That's me, y'all. Take me back, dear Lord. Because he had to take me back. Take me back. Take me back, dear Lord, to a place where I Won't let me. 